Where do dietitians and nutritionists get their information on nutrition and disease reversal, and are they getting accurate information? Most of them not, and that's true of both traditional dietetics, and it's also true of alternative views of nutrition. Um, a lot of these training programs for nutrition basically are supplement focused. They turn them into, they turn these people into holistic pharmacists. Um, another common thing in the alternative side of it, and I'll talk about dietetics in a minute, is um, this idea that you know, teaching moderation, different diets for different people, you know, there, there's a right diet for, for creatures on the planet. When you go to a veterinarian, I've, I've had pets all my life, and veterinarians will tell you there's a real specific diet for cats. You don't feed it to them, they die. And if you have gerbils or you have dogs or you have, you know, there are very specific diets for these critters. Humans are the same thing. We're just another mammal. So the, so the bottom line, that one, of the, one of the biggest problems with nutritionist training, non-dietetics, is it's not based on much science. So, and, and this, this is, again, a big problem we have, is over here, if there's no science, we go over here with different ideas, but no science. We haven't really changed anything. The problem with dietetics is it's very closely allied. The Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics is very closely allied with the USDA's dietary guidelines. In fact, almost every year that the guidelines, when they come out with new ones, the president of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics will write a great letter saying, congratulations you know, for looking at the science and coming up with the best stuff, and we can't wait to get our dietitians on board for helping Americans implement this, right? So there's a, there's a big tie to, to USDA guidelines, and then the Academy takes in millions of dollars a year from, from sponsors. It makes it very difficult for dietitians to give, um, who are allied with them, to give independent um, uh, advice. Now, having said that, there are, just like there's some marvelous doctors who have recognized the limitation of their training and they've gone off in a different direction with what they're doing, there are some marvelous dietitians. Some of them are friends of mine. We employ uh, one of them at our office who has the right idea about this. And um, so we have to be careful we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, but, but the training in general for health professionals of all stripes is terrible. It's terrible. And it's just as bad on the alternative side as it is on the traditional side. Please tell us what you eat for dinner on a typical day and be as specific as possible. Okay, well, you know, being a creature of habit, these are easy questions for me to answer. So um, lunches and dinners are kind of the same. I, I eat about five times a day. And I told you about my breakfast. And then for other meals, for like lunch and dinner, I like great big salads. Like if you saw the salads I make, you would think that's dinner for six. I eat it all. Okay, because I eat, I eat a ton of produce. Um, and then the, the starch part of my meal, I like sweet potatoes a lot. And one of the things I'll do on the weekend because I'm so busy is I'll bake up, um, I'll slice sweet potatoes and bake cookie trays of them, like 10 or 15 pounds of sweet potatoes. So those you can microwave real fast and you know, quick dinner so I can have two or three sweet potatoes. Um, another thing I do is make vegetable and rice dishes that um, I can you know, make big, great big pot. Uh, soups in the wintertime, like black bean chili and that sort of thing, and I can warm that up. Um, let's see, what else do I, squash. One of my favorite things is uh, butternut squash chopped up with uh, brown and wild rice with some cracked pepper on top, love that, you know. So, you know, wraps. Um, I'll, make, I'll take any of that and put it in a wrap, not the chili obviously, but the beans and rice and, and um, vegetables and rice and all that sort of thing, I can put that in a wrap and, and even eat that on the go. So those are the kinds of things I eat. And then late at night, I always eat something before I go to bed or shortly before, and that's usually fruit. Um, and I found this wonderful decadent thing. It's called um, uh, chocolate balsamic vinegar. It's infused with chocolate flavor, no fat, and if you put this in the fridge, it gets that um, the syrupy consistency of like chocolate syrup. So berries with this balsamic chocolate balsamic vinegar, it's so decadent you can't believe it. No guilt. So a lot of times that's a big late night thing at my house. Great big bowl of fruit with uh, this chocolate vinegar. What diseases can't be cured? How do you manage them? Things like lupus. Well. Any disease, I don't think we can say any disease, you always get cure. Um, so what you have to do is do as much as you can and then see what you're left with. And then you do as much as you can to, to keep it from progressing. 
you know, sometimes when we work with people, the best that we can achieve is it's not going to get worse. And that's a win. You know, if, if you look at multiple sclerosis patients, within 10 years, if they have traditional treatment, most of them are walking with assistance or in a wheelchair. So if you're walking with assistance and we keep you out of the chair, this is a win. You may not be running a marathon next week, but this is better. So I think it's very important that we don't overpromise what diet and lifestyle changes can do because that's, it's unethical. It, it borders on what the medical profession does, is promise things that they can't deliver. Um, it depends on the disease what you do. Uh, even cancer can become a chronic disease. We, uh, we have people who have had cancer for 20 some years. Not getting worse, not getting better. Well, it's sort of like being a type one diabetic. You can't cure it, but insulin lets you live your full lifespan if you do everything else right. So I think we have to be careful we don't overpromise. I think we have to be careful that we don't think that if you can't re reverse it, that, that bad things are gonna happen, not always. Things can become chronic diseases. Um, and then you do the best you can. One uh, example I'll give you is I have a, a, a woman I know uh, who has a case of rheumatoid arthritis. It's the worst I've ever seen, most aggressive. She's never taken any drugs. Um, she's fasted. She eats an optimal diet. She did an elimination diet and picked out a few tr triggers that seem to make her more uncomfortable. She doesn't eat those things. Um, she eats optimally. She's found that heat is very helpful. She comes to hot yoga a couple, three times a week. Um, and there's a little bit of misshapenness in the joints. I mean, you wouldn't notice it unless you, if I told you, you would notice it when you saw her, but she's kept that to a minimum. She can still button her blouses. And, and so my point is this woman is uh, almost the same age as I am. And by working hard at this, she's managed to um, really slow down the progression of this disease. And she's doesn't, there's nothing she can't do right now. And that's the best that we can hope for. I mean, I'd love for it to be gone. It isn't, you know, but we're, she's doing everything she can and it's working out pretty well. It's an amazing story. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of them. There are a lot of them like that. They can't get rid of it. I had a guy that lived with chronic lymphocytic leukemia for 22 years, died at 89 years old, and not of that, by the way. Um, with a little bit of chemotherapy here and there, he used to call, call it getting some juice. He had a great oncologist who, who was on board with this, and every time the numbers would pop up a little bit, he'd, he'd go see his oncologist, get a little chemo, and that would kind of tame it down. Never went away. I mean, there was just a, we could not get beneath one number, but, but, um, he had a great life for 20-some years, you know.